Mine's thank you so much, Robin. And I want to say thank you to the organizers for um, inviting me. This is um, a joint okay. talk with myself and Chris Fields, who's here. So I'm going to give the rough overview and let uh, Chris explain more, and he'll handle most of the Q&A. So I hope we get a lot of questions, because this is quite, I would say, anarchical, what we're doing. So the title of the talk is Making Up Our Minds. Um, what I have displayed here is a conjecture of mine using Peter Schulz's concept of a diamond. I've made an infinity category out of it. So thank you, Sophie, for introducing category. I don't have to talk much about it. Um, there is a central contradiction of experience. So experiencers want to understand the sources of their experience, but this is actually impossible in principle. Understand, understandings of theories are just more experiences, and what produced them is actually inaccessible in principle. So category theory is here to help us. There's always and must be morphisms acting on whatever structure we call imminent if we are to experience change. Otherwise, you're going to have fixed agents of temporal width zero that experience becoming, but they never become. So becoming is illusory. Hence the fundamental contradiction in any philosophy of becoming. It requires an assumption of processes outside any possible experience. So we're going to use sheaves to investigate the construction of temporal relations between events to temporal histories of individual events, binding together of histories and episodic memories and generative models to create this pluralosity of distinct times and identities for objects. So we're after an event dependent um, definition of time. So we have a couple main ideas. Um, so proposition one, we propose a kind of radically anti-Cartesian, anti-Kantian, anti-Husserlian idea that a thought is a kind of instantaneous experience with no well-defined referent and from which no well-defined ontology follows. Proposition two, eschatology and destiny as ideas about the mind are indefensible fantasies. The mind is made up. It has no determinate future, nor does it determine a future. It doesn't even exist. Illusionism is self-contradictory as a theory of consciousness, and illusion is an experience. So experiences can't be illusory. But claiming that the mind is an illusion makes perfect sense. Um, proposition four, a thought is a Hesiade in the Deleuzian sense with an identity that is something we get away with in a weak approximation. So the main idea continued. So the mind has exactly the same status as a classical objective external world. It's an inference from this instantaneous experience. Just this one which includes maybe an experience of memory. My inference of a mind, a history, a psychology, a personality, an identity has just one singular support, just one, this instant. My mind and Clive Waring, who has a retrograde amnesia, have exactly the same status and function. I experience memories, Clive doesn't. He infers his mind from his immediate experience, so do I. His mind has no function, neither does mine. Chatter says we experience the results of our cognitive, cog cognitive processes, never the processes themselves. Briston et al. say we experience the information encoded on our, mock, on our Markov blankets. Quantum theory says we experience the information encoded on our holographic screens. Hoffman says we experience the information encoded on our interfaces. Deleuze says we experience events on the plane of eminence itself. We are the events on the plane. So all science is applicable to observers literally gave us the same result. You have an experience encoded on a boundary. So we go further. The I. The I is an experience that I reify. I is something I've made up. Who's speaking? Like, who is that? You're assuming a continuity over time that doesn't exist. So identity is a short-term, weak approximation. Sketchy proof. Quantum theory says that isolated systems undergo unitary evolution, which produces non-separable states. If I take me plus everything but me, this is an isolated system. We take everything seriously. So asymptotically, I am entangled with everything else, so neither of us has a separate identity. Hence, identity is a short time, weak interaction approximation, something we can get away with, but not for very long. Maybe we only get away with it in each instantaneous experience, including experiences of memory but it's completely meaningless other than instantaneously. So we bring in Deleuze for help um, in an infinity categorical um, exigency that I've sort of proposed. So we say, what sort of phenomenological non anti formalism would actually support this sort of radical picture? Well, Deleuze defines society. There's a mode of individuation very different from that of a person, subject, thing, or substance. Reserve the name society for it. A season, a winter, a summer, an hour, a date have a perfect individuality lacking nothing. Couple of propositions that I've said that Hesiades are geometric points in a perfectoid diamond, a highly complex object I'm about to define. An infinity exigency 
Um, we go to the stack version of this is an infinity stack of an infinity one sheaf on an infinity one site ticking values in infinity groupoids. As such, uh, Derrida's as such um, is a what I call an infinity aporatic as. So it's a stackified version of this. Simple example, you can stackify the Hesiodi hour. Let's take, um, we don't have to do math in terms of sets, right? So let's actually put math in terms of stacks. So take the Sadie hour. Instead of viewing an hour in terms of sets, we can view an hour as a one stack. A one stack is a two one sheaf on a two one site taking values in a two one category. So um, in a two category, you have objects, one morphisms and um, um, two morphisms between the one morphism. So you would actually have one morphisms between the five o'clock plus two morphisms between the one morphism. So this is the level that we're talking about. So the one stack hour takes values in categories, not sets. The goal is a non-impredicative time. So, so a few more questions. Why can we never access what actually causes thoughts? Uh, no finite system can contain a complete representation of its own dynamics. Why are there no things in themselves? Because quantum theory strikes me as self-evidently self true. It's true as a description of the interaction between any, any finite system and its world. What is a thought? You have them, but what is it? So a thought is a modal, perhaps, as in one of our sensory modes, experience that is generated by imagination, not perception. But what does imagination mean from a quantum theory perspective? It's a source of classical information, but it must be written on a boundary. But it differs in a significant way from an action on the world, maybe. So a little bit of mathematics. Here's a definition of sheaf. Um, I'll skip for the interest of time. A condensed set in the term of Clausen and Schulze. You take the Proetel site of a point. Um, so if you want to do sheaves over a point, it's very tricky, but you can do it through this Proetel site. Um, it's a category of profinite sets with a finitely um, jointly subjective families of maps it covers. A condensed set. Um, it's a sheaf of sets on the Proetel site. Mathematics too. So if you let perf, um, uh, be the subcategory perfectoid space of characteristic P, or perfectoid space um, is a certain attic space. A diamond is a proatel sheaf on the perfectoid site written as uh, this quotient space of a perfectoid space by a proatel equivalence relation. Pretty hefty stuff. Perfectoid space is a certain attic space, either the central objects and non Archimedean geometry, covered by affinoid spaces of the form spa R or plus, where R is a perfectoid ring. Uh, these points um, of, of spa R or plus are equivalence classes of continuous valuations. So they're not sets, but they're uh, equivalence classes. What is a diamond really an algebraic space for the V topology, which is a Grothendieck topology on perf. Uh, one example of a diamond is um, uh, this sheaf spot QP, which is this uh, quotient, and this is a sheaf torsor ZP cross. So take your empirical model. <clears throat> Planning and its attendant frame problem are intimately dependent on time and memory. We develop an approach to temporal logic that's going to replace the traditional objective agent and event independent notion of time with a constructive event dependent notion of time. We're going to make this event dependent time entropic and well defined. So, an entropic categorization is a categorization of objects shared by events, VI and VJ, where we're taking events as uh, multi hypergraphs um, for which the adjoint time operator is well defined. This is what makes it entropic. Let X be a topological space, a pre sheaf of X is this. Um, uh, this uh, contravariant functor, or one of our lemmas, entropic categorizations are pre-sheafs on events. So in our empirical model, we use these sheaf theoretic techniques to uh, render this event-dependent time functorial. We're going to construct these memories as sequences of observed and constructed events with well-defined limits. We're going to maximize the consistency of categorizations that are assigned to objects. So we have two events joined by shared categorizations, and T12 is the induced time morphism. So in this figure, sorry about the pen. I still couldn't figure that out, Chris. I know, yeah. Two distinct, math genius can't figure this thing out. <laughs> two distinct memories connecting uh, two observed events, V1 and Vn. So panel A has only the observed events, V1 and Vn, plus four constructed events, which are these dashed ovals. Panel B adds an observed event, Vk, in which an object, OK, not included in either V1 or Vn um, appears. This is some sort of interpolation. So because they, these sets um, contain um, different observed events, they have different profinite limits uh, that may or may not be consistent as categorizations. So we then take this and we develop a condensed formalism that represents memories as pure constructs from single events. We formulate an empirical hypothesis that human episodic memory implements a particular constructive functor. 
An entropic categorization is a condensed set. We have a prediction. Human retrospective and prospective memory are actually implemented by sheafification functors from a single proatel site. If this is correct, we expect to find no persistent neural representation of either past or future events, only mechanisms for constructing instantaneous representations. So we extend this. Uh, we're currently in some work um, about using the diamond to uh, develop a new holography. So in the diamond holography, we take these six operations, which are written here, the Groth and Deke six operations, which are functors on sheaves. Um, you have an internal hom and then um, F lower shriek, F upper shriek and all of this. So the idea about the diamond holography is that we're trying to take a, a sequence of more and more specialized higher order functorial uh, uh, maps. So we have the six operations on diamonds and we're gonna bring in some arbitrary cobordisms. So we wanna take this whole diamond construction um, and map it to a cobordism boundary to link to H faces. And so if we have the two diamonds that are related by six operations, um, then we can actually get maps between the geometric points inside of these diamonds um, to have a nice topology. And then the do, if the two diamonds glue together, then we can get the cobordism boundaries to glue together. Um, yeah, and so let me show you what that actually meant. So in the last to tell you what this geometric point is. Um, so why is it called a diamond? You ask uh, Shulsa, he'll say, huh? first of all, because they're hard, these objects they are incredibly complicated. But secondly, because um, uh, a real diamond has these um, impurities. You can't actually see the impurity itself. You only see its many reflections on the many sides. Similarly, you take a geometric point, which is a morphism of schemes, which is the SPA CD, um, uh, where C is an algebraically closed affinoid field. And so you pull it back along a quasi pro cover, and uh, you're left with uh, pro-finitely many copies of SPA C. So this is a uh, my like version of what this in internal uh, impurity point looks like, which is a geometric point. So we're trying to map all this together on the cobordism space um, to get this diamond uh, holography. So I'll stop there so that Chris can take over. <laughs>